when DP reached out, and, and I don't know whose idea it was to either do the, the press conference here, Marty, or uh, to, to do it in, uh, in the city, we figured, well, it's, it's Earth Day after all, so let's do it out here. So happy Earth Day, everybody. Um, yep. Um, and, uh, but I think it's just that we haven't had a press conference out here in a long time. In fact, um, I can't ever remember doing one, right? So. Uh, why not? Because look at this. I mean, it's spectacular. So um, a brief history lesson to start, I think, would be appropriate, right? And it'll have to, there'll, there'll be some uh, resonance with what we're going through today. So uh, this all goes back to a referendum. This site goes back to a referendum that was passed in the, um, in the city back in 1864 at the height of the Civil War to create a, uh, a waterwork system uh, in New Bedford. And so originally, you know, as um, you know, at the time, New Bedford was, a, of course, a whaling city. But in the midst of the Civil War, things were changing rapidly, and we needed uh, a water supply to to support a growing city and an industrializing city. And so, folks had the foresight to embrace a referendum at that point and, and started a water supply that was uh, that, that drew water from uh, a lake in a cushionet, so much closer to the city center than than here. Uh, and then later in the 1880s, um, the city purchased uh, about 3,000 acres, ultimately uh, turned out to be 3,000 acres, but a sizable portion of Lakeville and Freetown uh, right around here. And uh, the uh, pond complex um, uh, that we're staring out on uh, in order to, uh, to be able to support, do really two things, uh, to support a growing city. So like here we are talking about infrastructure today for the sake of economic growth. Uh, but secondly, for the sake of dealing with a communicable disease, because in the 19th century, everybody knew what cholera was, and safe drinking water, clean drinking water, was, was a matter of life or death. And so, uh, as, as all of us now have been through a pandemic, or in the midst, still in the midst of a pandemic, we can readily appreciate uh, you know, those, those needs. You know, here we are today talking about water infrastructure and, and what it meant then and what it means uh, today, uh, both in terms of supporting economic growth as well as to, to keep everybody safe and clean. Um, so uh, we're here to, uh, I'm here to introduce a good friend of New Bedford's uh, DP Commissioner, Marty Suberg, to tell us, uh, to make certain announcements about uh, the state revolving fund funding for uh, a variety of wastewater and water projects uh, throughout uh, the state, uh, but especially so uh, right here in Greater New Bedford. And, and uh, he's going to recognize uh, a number of folks who are here today. Um, uh, but before I call him, there are a couple of people I just wanted to say thanks to uh, my fellow mayor, Sean O'Connell from Taunton. Taunton is also uh, a uh, beneficiary directly of, uh, of uh, the, uh, this facility, of this pond complex. And uh, it really is a big, big deal for, uh, for Southeastern Mass generally. And Sean has always been such a stalwart supporter of, uh, of this infrastructure and what it means for uh, the broader region. So it's great to see you. It's great to see a lot of you guys, by the way. It's been it's a reunion of sorts. We haven't been doing too many uh, events. So it's like, a, so it's like a, a class reunion. But it's great to see you, Sean. And, and Norm Oral, uh, who just does such a fabulous job. Um, as state rep for uh, for this part of Greater New Bedford and southeastern Massachusetts, and who's you know always there when when you need him. So Norm, thank you for for all of uh, your support. Uh, and uh, I, and I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, to Deb Zaro, uh, the uh, Region One. Uh, I, I, all right, acting, but you're not. That you've been you've been in that position so many times that it, never never mind the acting uh, uh, adjective. You she has been a uh, she's technically acting region one administrator of EPA, but has an uh, administration after administration, Republican and Democrat alike. She's she's been there at the helm of region one. It's just such a a great professional, um, and we've worked so well with her. Unfortunately, we're kind of a, a frequent flyer with EPA uh, in more ways that we care to admit, but uh, you've always been such a, such a, a great colleague to work with. And, and by the way, Deb, uh, though she may live in the Boston area, she married up. She, her husband's from New Bedford, <laughs> from the South End. So, uh, you know, we might, we in New Bedford might just deem that your most redeeming quality, but you have many of them. Um, Thank you, Mayor Mitchell. I yes, yes. My so, husband appreciates the 
I'm sure he does. <laughs> I'm sure he does. And uh, and I just wanted to uh, thank uh, Team New Bedford, uh, uh, the folks who uh, work so hard to make this happen uh, and to make the, our our water flow. I mean, so what we need, what a lot of people, what much of the public doesn't fully appreciate is that so much of what happens in a city happens below ground and uh, out of sight. Water, in, in any city, the water and wastewater infrastructure and broadband, electric, all that stuff is just an enormous amount of, of, it represents an enormous amount of investment but but supports so much activity, virtually every, all activity in any given city and New Bedford's no exception. So our, our Commissioner of Public Infrastructure, Jamie Pont, City Engineer, Sean Side, our Director of, of Waterworks, Iman Galati, and of course our uh, our uh, environmental steward and director of resilience, Michelle Paul. Thanks, guys, for uh, for being here today and for all that you do. And um, before uh, Marty uh, makes the big announcement, I just want to say thanks to Marty for uh, for all that, that you do, Marty, and, and and you've been such a fabulous partner on all manner of stuff. You have uh, many things that you are responsible for in your position, and this is just one of them. But uh, the SRF funding means a lot for us. It allows us to continue to build, to continue to grow as a city, and to continue to keep our, uh, our environment safe. So thank you so much for the support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And first and foremost, um, thank you for hosting. What a wonderful location, um, which really underscores both the beauty of the natural environment but the things we do to protect public health in our water. And I couldn't think of a better place uh, to have an event like this today. Even though you're feeling the breeze, <laughs> spring is coming. It's coming, it's not far away, and this is a wonderful reminder that we'll soon all be enjoying better days in beautiful places like this. So I, um, I wanted to thank you uh, for, again for having us. And I'm here uh, uh, on behalf of the Baker Polito administration to celebrate Earth Day. So I'll say happy Earth Day. I won't sing it, I'll just say it. <laughs> um, but it's important. And again, uh, on Earth Day, um, our secretary and uh, the agencies and the energy and environmental um, areas, we celebrate days, uh, we celebrate events like this, which again, underscore the work we do together with communities to protect public health and the environment. I wanted to acknowledge, uh, I'm joined here by my team, um, two of the finest managers I know at DEP, real leaders and have been real leaders in their fields for a while, are Kathy Baskin, who is our Assistant Commissioner for Water, and Millie Garcia, Millie Garcia Serrano, who is our regional director, who has served with great distinction for years and is known throughout the Southeast. I will say incongruously right now, they're holding the prop we had, which we developed before we realized that there would be wind gusts of over 20 miles an hour. And I, I'm officially discharging you of that duty. You don't, <laughs> you, you don't have, we got the point. Take a look at it before you leave. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful uh, representation of, of where the funding for the various projects have gone around the state, uh, prepared by our GIS folks. And uh, it, it's a good illustration of, of how we work as a commonwealth. So um, I also want to acknowledge our uh, uh, Director of Public Affairs, Ed Coletta, who uh, worked with uh, John in the city to put this event together. Um, and um, we're going to be hearing from uh, local officials who we are working with um, and, and who have uh, received some of the financing we're going to be talking about today. And so it's my, going to be my pleasure to turn the podium over to them in a moment. Before I do, I did want to acknowledge that um, we uh, at MassDEP are part of a bigger partnership that makes decisions about uh, infrastructure funding for water and wastewater. Um, we are part of a three-person board, uh, the Clean Water Trust, and the important partner, the chair of the trust, is actually the treasurer of the Commonwealth. And so we work closely with the treasurer's office 
through the Clean Water Trust with our partners in administration and finance and DEP to make sure that we are keeping this program moving so it can support the work of communities. And I wanted to recognize Jeff Keen, uh, Nate Keenan, excuse me, Nate Keenan from the Treasurer's Office who's here today with us. Um, one other person before I really uh, get the show on the road uh, that I want to acknowledge a major advocate for uh, clean water, drinking water projects, someone we work closely with. They represent the business side, is um, Jeff Mahoney of the United Contractors uh, Association of New England. They are real uh, supporters of the SRF program. They are a, a group that represents uh, your partners in the communities that work together. So Jeff, it's nice to see you here today. So every year around this time, the Commonwealth makes substantial financial resources available to communities and regional drinking water and wastewater facilities across the Commonwealth to help protect our environment. As I noted, this is done through the Clean Water Trust, collaborative work with DEP, the Treasurer's Office, and our partners in the administration. Each year, the Clean Water SRF offers the State Revolving Fund, we're DEP, we always deal in acronyms, but it's SRF, um, offers a half billion dollars or more to finance water, wastewater, stormwater, and other projects. This year, the Clean Water Trust, the, the program, is, this is dealing with the uh, disposition of wastewater and stormwater, is providing $622 million in low interest loans. This is on top of over $1.4 billion provided since 2015. On the drinking water side, and we're here at this wonderful drinking water facility, we have provided $195 million in low interest loans, which is on top of $682 million in water quality projects over the past several years. We offer not only loans, but in some cases loan forgiveness for important priority projects. And this has been an ongoing commitment and work that we would do with communities. We're here today at this treatment plant because we have awarded significant financing to the city of New Bedford and to communities in this area and on Cape Cod. In New Bedford, more than 56.2 million in financing for nine drinking water and wastewater projects has been issued this year. An additional 87 million has been awarded since 2015. So the investments are significant and support absolutely essential work you're doing. At this very treatment plant, some of these funds will be used for facility upgrades on a host of technical things that people like Millie and Kathy would be able to explain to you. <laughs> uh, there's also financing to support phase two of lead, line, lead service line replacements, a very important public health issue for all of us. And I really commend the work that the city has been doing over the years to address this issue. Um, this funding will help to replace up to 1,500 lead service lines, which is a, a, an important priority and has been recognized um, as, as an important element of SRF funding. Uh, we've, you've also received substantial funding for various wastewater projects, which again uh, will help with the efficiency and the environmental and public health protection that is so important. I will note, um, as the mayor has, that we are fortunate to have Mayor Shauna O'Connell here from Taunton, and that her city is receiving $34 million uh, in financing for three clean water projects involving wastewater and treatment plant upgrades and a variety of other improvements. I'm delighted that Mashpee Selectman Andrew Gottlieb is here, and uh, Mashpee, I believe, is a first-time SRF participant and it has been awarded $40 million to construct a very important project for, uh, for the town's wastewater recovery facility to address long-standing nitrogen impact issues, a very important development in the Cape. And so we're delighted that Andrew is here with us. Paul Furland is here from the city of Fall River. Uh, the city of Fall River received $29.4 million for clean water projects. Uh, I believe Jeff Clunan and Scott Medeiros are here from the Dighton Water District for uh, $3.8 million in financing for a water main replacement project on Main Street. 
The town of Kushnet will receive $12.9 million for a comprehensive wastewater management plan to help deal with septic systems uh, affecting water quality in the Kushnet River in New Bedford Harbor. And the town of East Dam on the Cape will receive almost $13 million to construct a third well and 11 miles of water main for their newly built system. Each of these communities, water suppliers, wastewater districts, work diligently to protect their residents and local natural resources. This is work we do together. I am proud that we can partner with these local communities and organizations and continue the progress of environmental protection and protecting public health. While I mentioned other partners, a very important partner um, in SRF financing is our federal partners. Annually, the US EPA provides funding that supports the SRF program in states all across the nation. We have been a beneficiary of that each year. I believe last year EPA provided over $90 million in new funding to the SRF and our revolving loan programs that allow us to leverage this funding to help communities. Um, as you've heard from uh, Mayor Mitchell, we have a strong ally in EPA Region 1. Uh, Deb Zaro, the acting regional administrator, has been a partner on not only clean water issues, but a number of environmental issues we deal with across the Commonwealth. And so it's my pleasure to turn the podium over to her and say a few words. Good afternoon. Happy Earth Day. I would like it to be a little warmer. Last week I was in St. Thomas. This is quite the different scenario today. Um, I want to thank you, Commissioner Suberg, for the invitation and Mayor Mitchell for the long-standing relationship hosting us today. I have to say we are a frequent flyer with Mayor Mitchell. We have a long relationship and it's mostly positive. So you may not have gotten that from his remarks, but it is. Um, we have cleaned up New Bedford Harbor. We have invested in renewable energy in the North Terminal Project and we have renovated many, many brownfield sites. Yeah. So, you know, I have to say there's a lot of good news for New Bedford there. Investing in communities like New Bedford and Taunton and Mashpee that face disproportionate environmental impacts is a top priority of the Biden-Harris administration and EPA Administrator Michael Regan. Providing infrastructure to help cities and towns across the country is paramount in closing the investment gap in wastewater and drinking water facilities. And nowhere is the funding more needed than Massachusetts, where we have some of the oldest infrastructure in the country. And it's hard to motivate citizenry to understand the importance of the infrastructure that's under the ground, as Mayor Mitchell said, the most important infrastructure. That's why programs like the State Revolving Fund are so important to communities in providing funding for infrastructure to make sure that we're protecting public health and the environment by providing clean and safe drinking water and improving water quality in our great water bodies, such as this one right here. New Bedford has shown incredible leadership in planning for and investing in drinking water and wastewater infrastructure, including projects to locate and replace historic lead lines, as Marty has mentioned. One of the most important impacts to children is lead poisoning, and a lot of it comes from lead lines. So that's a really important project. And New Bedford has made needed improvements in, in their wastewater treatment systems, many, many improvements over the years. And there's many more to go, and that's what this funding is all about. We also know that the SRF program benefits many communities that have drinking water and wastewater infrastructure needs across the Commonwealth. And other examples of great projects that Marty mentioned are represented by our colleagues here today from Taunton and Mashpee. In Massachusetts alone, the Commonwealth has received $1.6 billion with a B in clean water SRF money. Money that is leveraged through the Clean Water Trust in Massachusetts, allowing the state to fund over $6.6 .6 billion in wastewater infrastructure assistance. That's a pretty amazing return on investment. Similarly, the state has received over $550 million in drinking water SRF money, and it has been able to provide more than $2.1 billion in drinking water infrastructure financing to the cities and towns of Massachusetts. 
Because of the aggressive leveraging that Massachusetts does with the funds it receives from EPA, it has been able to provide critical infrastructure funding to towns and cities like New Bedford, Taunton, and Mashpee, and so many more communities. If you look at that map over there, you'll just get a view of how many communities have been impacted positively by that funding. The amount of funding the Commonwealth provides to communities is incredible, to say the least. But the success of those programs boils down to the dedication and commitment of the staff at both MassDEP and the Mass Clean Water Trust to make it all happen. It doesn't happen in a vacuum. The projects highlighted today show the dedication and leadership of New Bedford, Taunton, and Mashpee in improving the lives of so many of their citizens. It is so clear to me and to the Biden-Harris administration that sound infrastructure is critical to both the quality of life and economic prosperity. Thank you all for having me here today on this beautiful Earth Day, and thank goodness it's not raining. We'll see how fast it starts raining now that you said that. Um, right. Easy for someone who just came from St. Thomas. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, partnerships is a big theme. The partnership we have in state government, the partnership with communities, the partnership with the federal government. At the state level, um, the partnership is, um, is so important, uh, not only w within the executive branch and, and with the treasurer, but with our allies in, in the legislature. And um, there are so many issues that we work on together um, to help communities and to help the citizens of the Commonwealth. Um, uh, Representative Norm Arl has been someone that I've had the opportunity to work with a number of times on a number of issues um, in, in his district, um, and I know he's a strong advocate for the types of programs we're talking about here, so I'll, I'd like to ask Representative Arl if you wouldn't mind coming up to the dais and say a few words. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, it's a pleasure to have folks here in Lakeville in the surrounding communities of Taunton. And we're just thrilled in New Bedford here as their water treatment plant. And as a civil engineer myself with a background in, in engineering and environmental issues, it's, a, it's great to celebrate an Earth Day at a place like this where there are many intersections of work that's being done to not only promote the environment, as you can see, this is part of the largest natural water body in Massachusetts, but it also works together along with our communities, our cities of New Bedford and Taunton for their drinking water. It benefits our wildlife by the land that the cities have protected for many years. And I do thank you to the mayors for the long-standing efforts to not only protect the drinking water, but protect the area protect it all for the rest of us who live and work and recreate in this area. So I just appreciate all you do, and I appreciate being a partner at the state level and the Committee of Environment, and we love working together, and I just say, happy Earth Day, we'll keep it up. Thank you. A community that we have, um been working with closely um, is the city of Taunton. Um, it has been our pleasure to work with Mayor Shauna O'Connell on a number of issues that um, affect both her community and, and programs that we work on in DEP. So I'd like to ask uh, Mayor Shauna O'Connell of Taunton if you wouldn't mind uh, saying a few words. Thank you, Commissioner, and um, thank you for inviting us, and thank you, John, for hosting us. It's wonderful to be out here. It really is uh, beautiful, and um, we're so glad to see your whole team, Commissioner, here in the beautiful southeastern Massachusetts on Earth Day, which is the perfect time to talk about clean water and remind us of our obligations um, to really protect our one of our most precious assets. and. You know, our communities are inextricably tied together through our water supply, and it really is a collaboration among all of us who care so deeply about providing this um, important resource to our, um, all of our residents. <coughs> and we are very fortunate to have Norm Oral 
representing part of Taunton because he is kind of the in-house expert on all of these issues so we always have a go-to person um, for this and uh, I'm glad that our water superintendent uh, Mike Garuda is here with us today along with Jack Ham. Um, the um, uh, Commissioner Suberg and his team have been just fantastic to work with and they are so committed to communities all across Massachusetts in supporting us and working with us um, so we can move forward on important and very costly projects. Uh, just Taunton alone is looking at spending at a minimum sixty million dollars in upgrades and uh, for compliance. The um, the cost of infrastructure, you know, improvements, upgrades, maintenance, and um, complying with mandates uh, can really be um, overwhelming to our communities. And the Clean Water SRF Fund is uh, a lifesaver to many of us so that we can fund these projects um, that are in so, so important to the, the health, the safety, the well-being, and also to the uh, economic and community development in our communities. People don't always tie those things together, but they absolutely do go together. Uh, so we are grateful. Taunton has benefited greatly in the past from the FRF uh, program, and we are very grateful to be on the 2021 plan as well. So thank you. Uh, Commissioner and your entire team and EPA as well uh, for thinking of us and um, helping us move forward with some major, major projects that we need to do in Taunton. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. As I indicated, we're very excited about the funding that uh, went to the town of Mashpee because of the important work that they're doing to address water quality issues on the Cape. Um, in a moment, I'm going to um, ask the selectman of uh, Mashpee, Andrew Gottlieb, to come up, but um, I would be remiss. Um, I don't know that he uses it much in his biography anymore, but I'd remiss, it, it'd be remiss if I didn't point out he was a long-tenured employee of Mass DEP. He doesn't really talk about that much. I don't know why. Um, neither does Jack Ham from Taunton, for that matter, but... They are, and, and so they, they make, they, I'd like to think that their work at DEP has helped make those important contributions, but uh, in all seriousness, Andrew has been a real leader on clean water issues on the Cape, and uh, I'd be delighted if you'd come up and say a few words about your community. Thank you, Marty. I'll, I'll actually, I'll say this publicly. My time working at DEP was the best professional work I've ever had the opportunity to do with the best group of people I've had the opportunity to work with. Um, and having been on and having managed the SRF program, you know, you're taught as kids that it's better to give than receive. I like being on the receiving end today a little bit. So it's nice. Um, you know, Mashpee couldn't, and Cape Towns in general, couldn't be any diff more different than, than, than Taunton and New Bedford in the sense that um, for our wastewater infrastructure, we have nothing. We're starting from scratch. Um, and, you know, restoring and maintaining and upgrading existing facilities brings its own challenges, but starting from zero um, is a real challenge. And um, the SRF program is sort of the fundamental backbone of the financing strategy that the Cape in general and Mashpee in particular has to make us go from using the same practice that's been in use since people arrived on Cape Cod, you know, 400 years ago, uh, dig a hole in the ground, put your waste in the back, in the, in the hole, and hope that it didn't create a problem. Well, it's created an enormous problem. Um, and we're finally getting, as a region, to the point of dealing with it in a responsible, you know, modern manner. And the SRF is the basis that allows us to move forward to do that. Um, but also, you know, we're beneficiaries of an, a huge number of tools that the Baker administration and the legislature has provided us over the last several years, whether it's the creation of the Cape and Islands Water Protection Trust Fund, uh, the principal forgiveness that comes for certain communities through, uh, through Nate's work, the Clean Water Trust, the ability to do the Water Infrastructure Fund that came out of the um, uh, Water Infrastructure Bill several years ago, and the short-term rental tax that we've set aside to fund wastewater infrastructure. So we're able to go to our voters 10 days from now with this package of, fi of deal of uh, financing 
and ask them to move forward with a $54 million project that doesn't raise their general property taxes. Um, and so, you know, these tools and what the legislature has given us the ability to do over the years is actually coming into play now. And so, you know, we're at a transformative time as a region. Um, getting this support, because people still tend to view it, they don't believe everything I have to say at home, um, <laughs> as what's possible. But getting this as a reality is going to serve as a really strong signal to other towns up and down the Cape that this is real and we do have the opportunity to improve our environment in a financially responsible way. So thank you for the, uh, for the participation in the program and we'll be back. Thank you. <laughs>